Hot off the presses, we have data sharing in Microsoft Fabric next on Tales from the Field. Step three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's going to be a good day. Wake up, today's going to be a This is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field. Give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable where we feature content from the creators in the Azure Data community for the Azure Data community. And then on Monday and Wednesday, we have our MS Tech Bits. These are videos where we have found a solution to some type of issue or problem or some really cool technology in working with the product groups, customers, or on our own. You're watching one of these right now. Let's get over to that great content. All right, this is big news, but we have something that you guys have been clamoring for in Microsoft Fabric. We have roles and responsibility, the capability to begin to add security around individual users. And Hari Sundaram has a wonderful blog on the Microsoft Fabric blog, Data Warehouse Sharing. Sharing a warehouse allows you to provide read access to enable downstream users to access your data. You have to be an admin or a member of the workspace. The recipient has to be an AAD user or group. Okay, great. So now we know we have to be a member or we have to be a workspace admin. We also understand the recipient has to be an AAD user or an AAD group. But what are these permissions that we're talking about? So first we have read data, read all, and build. And it's important to understand these are separate permissions that do not overlap. Read data is read all SQL endpoint data. This is the equivalent of a DB data reader within SQL Server. The shared recipient can read data from tables and views within the warehouse. And if you want to further restrict them, we can use T-SQL. Grant, deny, revoke statements, all of that works. Read all is read all data using Apache Spark. So the recipient can read access to underlying Parquet files in one lake. They can be consumed using Spark. Read all should be provided only if the shared recipient wants complete access to your warehouse files using the Spark engine. Build permissions are build reports or the default checkbox. The shared recipient can build reports on top of the default data set that is connected to your warehouse. Build should be provided if you want the shared recipient to have build permissions on the default data set to create Power BI reports. Um, build checkbox is selected by default but can be unchecked. If no additional permissions have been selected by default, the user is going to use the or receive the read permission. So that read permission, it, that's the default permission, but it's important to realize that's just the equivalent of connect. I can't access anything. I would need to have a grant given to me, a grant object T-SQL statement written for me to be able to access any underlying table structures. Also, in the read all, the read data via the SQL endpoint, important to know, we can use grant and revoke, right? We mentioned that earlier, but that's really, really key. We can get very, very granular at the level of access to the tables that we want individual users to be able to have. If all this has made you curious, me too. You know how we like to do this. Let's head over to the demo. I'm in my Azure Snaps Analytics workspace and I'm going to go under my data warehouse and I'm going to click the little share option. And I'm going to go ahead and add some permissions. Let's give some permissions to Josh. I'm going to look up Josh Ludeman so I can get his AAD credentials. I'm going to give him read all for SQL, for Spark, for building data sets because my buddy loves SQL. He loves himself some Spark and he loves some data sets and some report building. So after I send this note so he's got his email, I'm going to click grant. And Josh is going to wake up in the morning and he's going to have an email that he's got access. But I can also say, let's manage access for our workspace. So I'm going to come over here. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to now add some permissions. Let's add our good buddy, Dan Taylor. So I'm going to say, let's enter Dan's email address because I know it corresponds with his AAD account. Because remember, it's got to be an AAD group or account. There's Dan. And let's give him viewer access. Now, remember, this is for the workspace. So I've got admin, member, contributor, or viewer that I could grant. Nice quick video this morning, but we've got a better understanding now of the sharing options we have for data warehouse permissions within Fabric. All right. You know where you like to keep this going? Down in the comments. Sound off. Love to hear from you. Any questions you've got? 
Once again, thank you so much for joining us from Tales from the Field. And be good to one another and have a great week. Bye, everybody. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up.